I think by default, if Biden, uh, if Bernie goes after Biden on this issue, Bernie is going to shine because he at his, he is at his best when he's fighting the issue of health care. And secondly, this is the issue that matters most to the voters. In most polls, health care even comes before the economy. So this is what you're leading on. Now, you need to do it beyond a tweet, beyond a statement. I want to hear this in rallies. I want Bernie Sanders to go out and do a press conference specifically to rebut Joe Biden. Because Biden doesn't have the facts on his side. That's why he's trying to get a, a third a third way uh, Wall Street funded firm who pretends to be um, progressive, who is openly hates Bernie Sanders. They said they would rather Lucifer as president than Bernie Sanders. I'm just making that up, but essentially they would rather Lucifer as president. Why aren't you going after Biden for third way? And you need to be going after him much more aggressively than a tweet. And then this, we want to see you fight, not just your supporters, but those voters that are making less than $50,000 a year, those voters that only have a high school degree that right now, for whatever ridiculous reason, are supporting Joe Biden, call it being misinformed and uninformed, they need to see the fact that the person they're supporting right now is lying to them. And I think Bernie Sanders is uniquely well-equipped to make that case. So I'd like him to drill this home time and time after. And also, one thing that I think Bernie Sanders, frankly, I don't know why his campaign hasn't been doing more of this, at every single rally he has, there is 100% amazing, potentially viral, viral making human beings in the audience. When I say viral making, I mean like videos going viral. Bring up people on that stage if you're Bernie Sanders. Tell them about the hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical debt they have. Tell them about their insurance company denying them for surgery for cancer or whatever it is. These moments, just like the moment where you had a veteran at your rally that got news coverage saying, I'm gonna kill myself, I can't take care of myself, I can't get covered for, I forget what the issue was, my apologies, uh, a, a serious medical issue that's making him chronically ill to the point he's suicidal. You have those kinds of stories sitting right Rally after rally. Maybe Bernie Sanders, he doesn't want to exploit. I, I don't know. I, I don't know uh, what is the reason, but people respond to human beings. People respond to personal stories. So Bernie could keep going up there, you know, giving the same speech. We all know the speech. We all like the speech. Uh, and we all know the issues. And that's great. We support him for policy. But for those voters outside his base, they will respond if they see. It's not just Bernie saying this is what happened. This, they need to see the human suffering from the healthcare industry, and then they might re wonder, well, what if this happens to me? Frankly, Bernie Sanders can find stories like this. I mean, can you believe this story? This guy had to have emergency back surgery. Frank Esposito says it started last March with unrelenting back pain. He could barely move, and an MRI showed a big bulge in his spine. A specialist told him to go to the closest hospital immediately. Doctors at the emergency room said he needed surgery. The herniation was so severe it could cut his nerve and render him paralyzed. Surgery was a success, but then the bill started coming over $650,000 in all. His insurance company, you know, Biden says, Americans love their private insurance. Pete Buttigieg, Bernie, why are you making Americans choose between their wonderful, generous, patriotic private insurance and government-run health care. Why, Bernie? Why? His insurance company said his back surgery didn't qualify as an emergency and wasn't medically necessary. Quote, what was my choice? Just to be paralyzed for the rest of my life? Asked Esposito, a tool and die maker from Long Island, where I'm from. Then to get these bills that were so overwhelming, you, can, you say, this can't be real. I mean, I really don't have to pay this. How am I going to pay this? And you sit there and you start crying because you don't know what you're going to do. This guy, let's, let's get this straight, okay? And I'm going to find out. I'm going to try to get in touch with this guy and uh, hopefully get an interview if he wants to do it. You're touring me. You're telling me that you're back. And I, I had two back surgeries in the last year and a half. Not, not as severe as this guy, but pretty bad. I mean, Jen saw me before my first back surgery. I couldn't, I couldn't comfortably stand. I couldn't walk either. So 
This guy is near paralysis, okay? He's told if you don't get emergency surgery, you're going to cut your nerve, which means you're paralyzed. At his health insurance company, eh, it's not medical ne medically necessary. Apparently, the only way, they, way to prove it is after you cut the nerve, after you're paralyzed, then you can get the surgery. This is common in America. And these stories are generally in the back rooms where nobody can see them. This is what for-profit insurance companies do. They're not interested in your health. They're not interested in your well-being. They're not interested in your future. And they're not interested whether you live and die. They're interested in pleasing their shareholders, making the end of the quarter projections and end of year projections. That's it. That's all. And Joe Biden knows this. But the problem is he swims in the same exact circle and he, he drinks caviar, he eats caviar and swigs champagne at the same exact fundraisers with the Wall Street bankers invested in these degenerates, with the far, big pharmaceutical companies doing business with all these degenerates, and with pretty much all the same officials, whether it's pharmaceutical industry executives, whether it's hospital executives, they are all in the same swimming pool as Joe Biden, and they're giving him money. Okay, so this is happening all over the place, but Joe Biden says, my plan gives Americans choice. My plan is better for the middle class. My plan costs less. Yeah, well, your plan leaves out 10 million people. And by the way, I think that's a underestimate of how many people would be left out because that's just how many people literally would not have insurance. That's not mentioning how many people might get insurance like they have on Obamacare now, but would not be able to afford all of the bills they're getting or afford the deductibles or, or afford the co-pays. There's another problem when it comes to um, a, any plan that's not government run health insurance. As we've seen with Obamacare, these plans are constantly under the gun of being eliminated. I think Republicans are not going to stop trying to eliminate, uh, call it Biden care if he got into the office, or if Republicans maintain the Senate or maintain either house, wouldn't uh, work on you know uh, weakening rules, this and that. You think there's not going to be more challenges to specific parts of Obamacare or Biden care that could go to the Supreme Court? When you have government-run health care, that takes it off the table. Nobody is touching Medicare because it's been ingrained in our system and the people will not stand for it. Just like, that's why they're fighting against Medicare for all so hard, just like nobody could, would touch Medicare for all when it's in the system and the culture and society for a certain amount of time. That's why you need a government-run health care plan. So, I don't know what Joe Biden's talking about. He's putting, you know, let me poll people and ask them, is a, is, is a thousand dollar cap affordable for you for a deductible? Joe Biden says, oh, you're, you would only have a thousand dollar cap max deductible. Can you afford a thousand dollar deductible right now before you could access your health care? Can you afford that? Can you afford the, the uh, after you meet that, still maybe having to pay 40? 50, 75, $100 a cope for, for a doctor's visit? What about the medications? Because it's not capped at $200 under Joe Biden's plan because Joe Biden fundamentally thinks healthcare should be a commodity you have to pay for. And that is barbaric, as Bernie Sanders has been saying for many, many years. And that's why it's kind of amusing to me. I mean, we get emails from all the campaigns this is an email Joe Biden's campaign is sending out. Biden for president launches campaign blasting Donald Trump's relentless attempts to deny millions of Americans health care. Deny millions of Americans health care? So are you. Sure, Trump is worse. Let's not get it twisted. You're not insuring health care for all Americans. And even if people get Obamacare or whatever, Biden care, most people still cannot afford it. Because... Obamacare is fundamentally the, the, one of the hallmark and best um, visualizations of failed public-private partnerships. You know, all these people who are always boosting of economic development, we need to have more public-private partnerships. Well, how's those public-private partnerships working out for you in Flint, in Detroit, in Milwaukee, in Cleveland, in Philadelphia, in Chicago? How's that working out for you, working class? 
is the private is is private is the public sector K I S S I N G with the private sector helping out you? I don't think so. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that Bernie Sanders continues on this path. I'm hoping that he continues going after Biden because it's a winning message. Bernie Sanders is strongest on Medicare for all. And frankly, I think Biden is a very weak candidate. And I also think part of why Elizabeth Warren is rising is because people are starting to get second thoughts on Joe Biden. Part of why Elizabeth Warren is rising is because people are getting second and third thoughts on Kamala Harris. So one poll in Iowa does not mean much to me. Is Elizabeth Warren rising? Yes, we can't put our head in the sand and you know pretend it's not happening. But I think that if Bernie keeps going after Biden, a lot of those Biden voters are that would be open to Bernie Sanders before Elizabeth Warren. So let's see if he does it. Bernie oftentimes is aggressive, goes after um, somebody like Biden, and then kind of pulls back and goes back to doing the same thing he's been doing. I say have an aggressive campaign against Biden. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.